Hey everybody, Connor here today at eTrailer.com. We're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the draw tight trailer hitch receiver here on a 2012 Ford Edge. So this is what our trailer hitch is going to look like installed. And as you can see, it has a hidden design. Now basically what this means is the majority of our cross tube here is actually going to be tucked up behind the rear bumper. So the only thing we're really going to see are the receiver tube opening and our trailer connector mounting bracket. This is going to make for the most factory-like overall seamless appearance. So this particular hitch here has a 2 inch receiver tube opening with a class 3 rating, which is going to be the highest available for this vehicle. Now what this is going to allow us to do is the larger 2 inch receiver tube opening is going to give us a much greater variety of accessories to choose from such as bike racks or cargo carriers. So in addition to hitch mounted accessories, we can also use our trailer hitch to pull a trailer. Now, if we're going to be doing so, we're going to have a 3,500 pound weight capacity, which is going to be the gross trailer weight rating, which is how much we can pull outward on the receiver tube here. In regards to tongue weight, which is going to be the downward force here, that's going to be 525 pounds. However, we need to make sure we go ahead and check the vehicle's owner's manual to ensure that the trailer hitch capacities exceed the hitch. If not, we're going to have to go by the lower of the two ratings. So if we are towing, you may want to use a weight distribution system. It's definitely going to be a good idea depending on what kind of trailer you have. And if you are using one of these systems, the capacities of our trailer hitch are going to increase to 4,000 pounds for gross trailer weight. We have plenty of weight distribution systems here at eTrailer. So if you're going to use one of these, make sure you go ahead and check out our selection. So a couple things that draw tight does that's specific to the draw tight hitch. Number one, we're going to see our trailer connector mounting bracket, which is welded to the cross tube. What this does is we can simply just attach a no drill bracket here using these holes. It's going to give us a nice convenient access point for our trailer connector. Also on the side of our receiver tube here, you're going to see we're going to have two separate holes here. One of these is the standard 5 8 inch diameter hole here, which is for our 5 8 diameter hitch pin. Now keep in mind, these are going to be sold separately because they don't come with the hitch. They're going to be used for securing our accessories such as our ball mounts and bike racks. But what draw tight does a little bit differently than most other trailer hitch manufacturers is they go ahead and they machine the second hole. What this second hole is, it's going to be used with this J-pin stabilization device. Again, it's sold separately, but we have them here at eTrailer. Now what this does is, we're going to take the standard 5 8 inch pin, stick it through that hole there, and then we're going to see the other end of our pin here. It's going to have a little bit smaller portion. That'll install into that hole. And then we'll come back with our flange nut here, tighten that down, and basically what this does is, it's going to apply pressure to our hitch mounted accessory, so we don't have to worry about it rattling while we're driving down the road. And another feature here about the J-pin stabilization device is it has a lock so we can secure our accessories. And then last but not least, we're going to have our safety chain loops welded to the bottom of the receiver tube. These are going to accept the smaller S-type chains as well as the larger clevis hooks. So now we have a couple measurements here for you that are going to help when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories. First measurement we have here is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. That's going to be 11 and a half inches. Now this measurement will be useful when we're selecting our ball mount so we can make sure we can get the correct rise and drop according to our trailer's needs. The next measurement we have here is the distance from the center of the hitch pinhole to the outer edge of the bumper. That's going to be three and a half inches. That measurement will be useful when we're selecting our folding accessories such as a bike rack or a cargo carrier. That way we can make sure while it's folded up in the stowed position that it doesn't come into contact with our vehicle. So in regards to installation, this is definitely going to be something you guys can install by yourself at home. We don't need to lift the vehicle. We're not going to need any specialized tools. So we're definitely going to be able to do this one ourselves. We really don't need any mechanical experience either. So I definitely encourage you guys to try this at home. Now let's go ahead and jump into that installation so we can show you how it's done. So to start our installation off, we actually need to go ahead and lower our exhaust here so we can get our hitch up into place. 
But the first step to do this is we need to go ahead and take a support strap here. We're just gonna be using a cam buckle strap. We need to go ahead and support this portion of our exhaust pipe here. That way when we remove the isolators, it doesn't fall down and cause any damage. So we're just gonna take two little hooks here. It doesn't really matter where we hook it. We just need to support the exhaust here. We're just gonna hook it to the, the coil springs there, and then we're gonna pull that up like so. So now we can go ahead and break free our exhaust hangers from the rubber isolators. And in order to do this, what's gonna help us out is we're gonna take a spray lubricant here, and we're gonna spray down the metal hanger that attaches our exhaust pipe to the rubber isolator. So we're gonna go ahead and spray down each one of these here, nice and good, to help us when we're removing them. So there's gonna be one here on each side, and then one here at the rear. So now we're gonna take an exhaust hanger removal tool or a pry bar, whatever you have handy. We're gonna go ahead and pop out each one of these hangers here. Just like that. So we'll go ahead and repeat this process now on the other two hangers. So this is what our exhaust should look like. We have it properly lowered here away from the vehicle. So you can see here, we have plenty of room to sneak our trailer hitch up in there. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come on the inside of the vehicle here. We can see this center bracket here, which is attaches the bottom part of our fascia to the body of the vehicle. We're gonna have one screw here. We need to go ahead and remove that using a 7 seconds inch socket. So now we'll go ahead and take this center support here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull down on our fascia because we're just gonna tuck this back up and away in that little pocket just like that. And once that's done, we can go ahead and take our screw that we removed, go ahead and insert that back into the hole. So now we need to come underneath here. We're gonna have our two heat shields here. Those both need to be removed. In order to remove these, we're gonna have three screws one here, one here, and one here, as well as a couple push fasteners. So we're gonna get an eight millimeter socket. We'll go ahead and re remove the screws now. So now we should be able to come down. We're gonna take a little trim panel tool here. I'm gonna try to pry those little push fasteners off. Keep in mind, we have one more here at the top. Now we'll go ahead and do this process on the other side. So now we're gonna take our heat shield here, we're gonna modify it slightly. Now it's gonna get in the way of our hitch, so we need to go ahead and trim out two areas. Pretty much the rounded corner here needs to come out, and this little tab here needs to come out as well. We're gonna be taking a pair of tin snips to go ahead and remove these sections here. Come around to the other side here. We're just gonna sort of cut out this rounded corner here. So it should look about like that. We'll go ahead and repeat this process on the other side now. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our heat shield after we've trimmed it. Now, if you notice these two bolts here, we won't be reinstalling. We'll actually have the hitch sandwich those to the frame. So we're only gonna be using one of the factory screws here, as well as that push fastener. But once we have the heat shield in place, the next thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna install our hardware here into the frame. For this, we're gonna need our bolt leader here, our carriage bolt, and our spacer block. Now the holes we're gonna be using is this very most forward one here, directly behind the rear bumper. Then the other one is this oblong hole that's gonna line up pretty much here with our uh, our hanger isolator for our exhaust. So we're gonna go ahead and install both of these now. In order to get the right curvature to the opening that we need, we're gonna go ahead and straighten out sort of this first couple, five, six inches or so of this bolt leader. So what we're gonna do next is, we're gonna go ahead and feed it through our hole here. 
the coiled end that is, and then we're gonna come out behind the bumper there where the opening is, which is gonna be kinda hard to show you, but if you follow my hand here, it's gonna be right around this area here, directly behind the rear bumper fascia, sort of above where our exhaust pipe would be. So it's gonna take a couple times, you know, I don't get this right the first time every time, but there's gonna be a small access hole there that we should be able to feed the coiled end of our bolt leader out. As you can see, we've done that now. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, just gonna make sure that I don't pull the other end of that leader back into the frame. But we're gonna take one of our spacer blocks and one of our carriage bolts. We're gonna go ahead and put those on now. Start with our spacer block and then thread on one of our carriage bolts. So then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna grab the other end of our pull wire and we're first gonna sneak the spacer block up into that opening into the frame and then we're gonna follow that up with our carriage bolt. And we should be able to pull it down and into the hole that we need. Just like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and you can remove the bolt leaders or you can leave them on. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove them now. And we're just gonna follow the same process here on this forward most hole. Now with an extra set of hands, we can go ahead and sneak our hitch up into position over the exhaust and onto the frame. So keep in mind, we need to be very careful during this step here that we don't push our hardware back up into the frame. So now we're gonna take a 19 millimeter socket, just go ahead and snug up all of our hardware. Now we'll take a torque wrench here, we'll go ahead and torque down our fasteners to the specifications and the instructions. And now the final step of our installation here, we'll go ahead and raise our exhaust back up into position. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the draw tight trailer hitch receiver here for our 2012 Ford Edge.